Our next rule for derivatives is the quotient rule. We're going to jump straight into an example here. We're going to determine the derivative of 3x squared plus 2x plus 1 divided by x squared. Now this is similar to what we did in our last video with the product rule, but in this example we have a function in our numerator f of x, in this case 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, divided by a function in the denominator that we might call g of x. So this time, instead of examining the product between f of x and g of x, we're examining the quotient of f of x divided by g of x. And the rule to do this derivative is listed here in the bottom right corner when we have a quotient between two functions, f of x and g of x, we do the derivative of f prime of x times g of x, so the derivative of f of x times the original g of x. Now pay attention here, we get minus instead of plus, that subtraction instead of addition this time, minus f of x, times g prime of x, so the original f of x times the derivative of g of x, all divided by the original g of x squared. So a little bit more cumbersome to handle, but our approach is going to be very similar in that we're first going to identify what our f of x is. f of x here was 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, and we're going to identify what our g of x is. In this case, it's x squared, so that's the function in the denominator. f of x is what's in the numerator, g of x is what's in the denominator. Then I calculate the derivative of each. So f prime of x, the derivative is going to be the derivative of 3x squared. So that's going to give me 3 times the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. Plus the derivative of 2x is just 2. And the derivative of 1 is 0. I can simplify this further to get 6x plus 2. So that's my derivative of f of x, f prime of x. Now I do the derivative of g of x, so I have g prime of x, and that's going to be the derivative of x squared, or 2x. From here, I take my f of x and g of x and their corresponding derivatives, and I just substitute them into my equation for the derivative dy over dx. So dy over dx is going to be equal to f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x all divided by g of x all squared. So one of the ways I remember the order is that I bookend this with my derivatives. f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x. So it's kind of bookended with the derivatives, all divided by g of x squared. From here, I substitute the expressions I've come up with. So for f prime of x, 6x plus 2 times my g of x, which is x squared, minus my original f of x, which is 3x squared plus 2x plus 1, times g prime of x, which is 2x, all divided by the original g of x expression, x squared, squared again. And that's the application of the quotient rule. It's a little bit ugly, so from here I'm going to simplify it, but technically I've completed the quotient rule. Now to simplify this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything through, I have 6x times x squared, so that's going to give me 6x cubed, plus 2 times x squared, so I've got 2x squared, minus, and I'm going to keep this all in brackets for now so that I don't forget that minus. I have 3x squared times 2x, giving me 6x cubed, plus 2x times 2x, giving me 4x squared, plus 1 times 2x, giving me 2x all divided by, now x squared squared gives me x to the power of 4. Now I'm just going to take what I have here and shrink this so I have a bit more space. Next I want to collect the like terms in the numerator. I have 6x cubed minus 6x cubed. Let's not forget that this is minus everything that's in the brackets. 
So that leaves me with 0x cubed. 6 minus 6 is equal to 0. Next, I have 2x squared minus 4x squared, leaving me with negative 2x squared. And finally, I'm going to subtract that 2x, leaving me with negative 2x, all divided by x to the power of 4. I can simplify this even further by recognizing that there's an x in each of the numerator terms. So I can factor that out, x times negative 2x minus 2, all over x4, to the power of 4, I should say. So this can get simplified so that the x in the numerator uh, gets cancelled by one of the x's in the denominator, leaving me with x cubed in the denominator. So I have negative 2x minus 2, all over x cubed. And there's a simplified expression. Now, of course, there are a lot of other ways I could write this expression, but this is good enough for me. Now, let's summarize what we just did in the next slide. We have the quotient rule of derivatives, and, it's, and we use this rule when we have f of x, some expression of x, divided by another expression of x, g of x. And to do the derivative, I take f prime of x from the numerator, the derivative of the numerator, times the denominator g of x, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator g prime of x. And then I divide everything by g squared, the denominator squared. Let's reinforce this with one more example. I want to determine the derivative of h of x, which is equal to the square root of x divided by x plus 1. Now this is a perfect example of when to use the quotient rule as I have an f of x where my f of x is equal to the square root of x divided by g of x, another expression of x, where g of x is equal to x plus 1. I'm going to use the quotient rule so I have that listed in the bottom right corner. Now I'm going to rewrite f of x in exponential form so that I have x to the power of half. Now I can determine my f prime of x, which I'm going to need to be able to do my quotient rule. So that's going to become half times x to the power of half minus 1, negative half. Next, I'm going to determine the derivative of g of x, g prime of x, which I'll also need to be able to do my quotient rule. Now the derivative of g of x is going to be the derivative of x, which is just 1, plus the derivative of 1, which is 0. So g prime of x is just 1. Now I'm going to take my f of x, g of x, and their associated derivatives, and I'm going to substitute them into my quotient rule. So determining h prime of x, I'm going to have f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x, all divided by g of x, the original numerator, squared. Substituting my fg and f prime and g prime into this equation, my f prime is half x to the power of negative half. g of x, now that's the original denominator, is x plus 1 minus the original numerator, f of x, x to the power of half, times g prime of x, the derivative of the denominator, in this case 1, all divided by g of x, the original denominator, x plus 1, all squared. Now I've completed the quotient rule for the derivative. I've actually done the derivative, but we're going to clean this up a little bit. So here comes the algebra. So I'm going to multiply half x to the power of negative half times x. So I have half and x to the power of negative half times x to the power of 1. I add the exponents. So negative half plus 1 gives me positive half. Plus half x to the power of negative half times 1 leaves me with half x to the power of negative half here. Minus x to the power of half times 1, x to the power of half. All divided by x plus 1 all squared. Now I'm going to collect my like terms. In this case, I have x to the power of half here and x to the power of half here. Let's not confuse the like terms with x to the power of negative half. That's a different expression. But I can collect the x to the power of half terms. So what I've got here is a coefficient of half minus a coefficient of 1. So that's going to leave me with negative half x to the power of half 
plus half x to the power of negative half all over x plus 1 squared. And there I have h prime of x relatively well simplified, so I would accept this as an answer. Now I could factor this further by recognizing that I've got a common factor of half in each expression in the numerator, as well as I can have x in each uh, expression, each term I should say, and the lowest exponent is negative half. So factoring out half times x to the power of negative half from the numerator, a little algebraic exercise we can do here, I then have negative half divided by half, so that gives me 1, x to the power of half minus half, so that's going to leave me with x to the power of 1. If you're confused how that works, let's think about that for a moment. If I have, if I have x to the power of half divided by x to the power of negative half, the rule of exponents would have me subtract the exponents, so I would have x to the power of half minus a negative, so that becomes a plus half, so I get x to the power of 1. So that's how I get this x to the power of 1. Then the next term would be plus half x to the power of negative half divided by half x to the power of negative half, well that's just 1, all over x plus 1 squared. Now what I can do is I can take this term and recognize that it is the equivalent of 1 over 2x to the power of half. So I can plop it into the denominator and I get h prime of x is equal to negative x plus 1 all over 2x to the power of half times x plus 1 all squared. Now there's a little bit of an algebra exercise, so if I were to say, show me how the derivative of h of x is, and I showed you this, you would have to work your way to get there. Now that sums up our section on the quotient rule. Don't worry, in the subsequent knowledge checks, I won't be having you do some heavy algebra lifting like this, but this should get you ready for our next lecture.